Hello and welcome to Songs for the Struggling Artist, the blogcast. This is episode 406. It's been a little while. My name is Emily Rainbow Davis. Uh, welcome back to you and to me. I was out of town for a few weeks and decided to just take a pause. So if you missed me, I actually appreciate that. <laughs> Being missed is nice. And it's probably good, actually, that I took a pause because I have also taken a bit of a pause in the writing stage of this whole process. Uh, it's been a kind of a slow couple of months, which if you are up to date with the blog, you may understand why. Um, and that episode is coming in two weeks uh, for for listeners who are listeners exclusively. But, you know, basically fewer blogs means fewer podcasts. Um, so it's actually good I took a pause in the podcast department because uh, there are not that many blogs in the, in the hopper ready to roll. There's three. Uh, so I better get cracking is what I think I should probably do. Uh, anyway, today's blog is about reading and was inspired by um, an exchange I had with one of my patrons from Patreon. Um, and about, you know, how we prefer to read the experience of reading online, the experience of reading paper, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So I'm going to read that to you uh, in just a moment. Meanwhile, um, just saying thank you for sticking around, even though there was a pause. And, uh, and now I shall read to you, print this for extra comprehension. A patron of mine sent me a message about receiving my zine, explaining that her husband found it easier to read the paper version because he didn't really read so much on the computer. I said I understood and felt similarly that I much preferred paper to reading online, which is funny, really, because I publish most of my stuff on the internet. This exchange made me think of a moment of transition that happened at one of my jobs years ago. It started like this. I'd been working at BAM as a teaching artist, where one of my main gigs was doing pre-show prep workshops. Whenever we'd get assigned a show, we'd receive a packet of information about the show, information about the school, our contracts, and, if it was available, a videotape of the show we were going to teach. It had gone like this for quite a few years when the program manager, maybe the third one I'd worked with at that point, started to email us PDFs of show information instead. And this is the moment of transition. I noticed when I received this information this way that I did not read as carefully, that my understanding was less. I found it hard to concentrate on what was on the screen in a way that had never been an issue with the paper packets. So, I spoke to the program manager, and I made a request to continue to receive the paper versions of these documents, instead of the digital versions. I felt a little like a teaching artist diva asking for that, but I really did notice how much it impacted the quality of my work. The good news was that it was such a transitional moment that my program manager honored my request and sent me the paper versions for a while. I went away to grad school, and by the time I came back, there were no more paper packets to be had, and no more videotapes, just links. Somewhere between 2005 and 2008, theater education went entirely digital. Except for the contracts. We signed those in person, at meetings. The thing of it is, it's not that my ability to read on my computer or iPad or iPhone has improved I just have gotten accustomed to not reading as carefully. I still read better, more thoroughly, with more attention, on paper. I take in more details on paper. I process better. I have much more patience. On a screen, I'm always in a hurry. I skim more aggressively. My internal voice reads things there like this. Yeah, yeah, infrastructure, sexism, oh, ha, 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 joke, fact, fact. Why is this article so long? Is there anything else here I absolutely need to know? Fact, fact. I'm just going to skip these last three paragraphs. On screens, I usually just get the gist. On paper, I actually read most of the time. 
and I read much more expansively on paper. Pretty much every magazine I receive, I read from cover to cover, even if I don't think I'll be interested. On screen, if I don't think I'll be interested, I do not bother. On screen, I only read a handful of things that I am sure will interest me or give me some kind of benefit. Back before everything was digital, I used to print out text to read it to accommodate my reading skills. Now I don't bother. I just read haphazardly. I recognize that as a writer who publishes on the internet that many people don't read these words as carefully as I'd like. I write them carefully with pen and paper and my full attention, then type them up later with a lot less attention, then publish them with even less into their home on the internet where I'm guessing many people read as carelessly as I do. Not everyone, of course. One of my patrons reads my work so carefully she'll often send me copy edits. But given my own experience, I cannot expect that any of this hits everyone fully. I don't take that personally. It's not like I have a different way of sharing my work. Well, except the zine. There is not really a viable alternative to reading and writing on the internet. Many of the magazines or newspapers I used to read are only available online now. There is no kind program manager of the internet willing to accommodate my preferences of reading paper. But I do feel like it's important to acknowledge that a lot of us aren't reading or taking in information as carefully or attentively as we could. There is a loss in this world of more and more things to read on screen. Words on paper set there by pen or printer, are just more memorable. A friend sent me a letter recently, and I remember what's in it more than any email I've received. And I guess if you want me to read something carefully, go ahead and print that out for me, if you don't mind. I'm a diva for the printed word. It is interesting now that I am recording this audio version of this post that I think audio is more like reading on paper to me in that like I can't really skip stuff. I can tune out for sure, but I definitely pay attention to audio much more deeply than I do to anything I read on a screen. I'm just realizing now, like, I think it's partly why I, I am such a fan of podcasts is that I really do take in information uh, through my ears in a, in a just like a deeper way than I do. Uh, the, certainly reading online, I don't know about print. I feel like that they might be roughly equivalent. But I also think there's something about location for both audio and for reading like a physical book and that I really remember often, if I think back on the thing that I heard or read, I remember where I was when I read them or heard them, you know. Uh, for example, I listened to an audiobook version of, um, I think it was called Scarcity. It was a book about economics that I listened to a lot on the bus. And specifically, I remember this particular corridor on like, I don't know, I think it must have been like 86th Street or something. I mean, like I physically remember being on this bus listening to this book. Um, and I absolutely feel that way about a lot of books that I've read where I can tell you exactly where I was when I was reading them. Whereas like when I read stuff online, it's like, well, I was at my computer. That's where I was. <laughs> and possibly I was with my computer somewhere else, but like it just doesn't have that sort of same sensation of my brain marking the thing uh, with space also. I don't know. I'm I'm fascinated by it all um, and also disturbed by my own sort of, you know, looseness around reading in a form that is not as comfortable for me. Um, And also knowing that that is probably true for a lot of people who are perhaps less aware of it. And also it just means that, like, I don't know, I read a lot more widely, wildly out of my, you know, lane on paper. And I, I, I don't do that online. I really don't. 
not very often anyway. Anyway, uh, uh, thank you for listening and for taking this information in through your ears. I appreciate it. It's nice to be with you. Um, I have found a perfect song for this post, and I am very excited to share it with you. Uh, I, it's a Weezer song. Never would have thought in a million years that I would be covering a Weezer song, but here I am. Um, and it is called Screens. I'm going to play it for you shortly. Meanwhile, thank you so much for listening. If you like this podcast, please tell someone about it. Like, review, subscribe. Uh, you can do all those links to do those things in your own podcast app. There should be links in the show notes. If you would like to support this podcast, amazing, please do. It's patreon.com slash Emily R. Davis. There's also Kofi. There's PayPal. All those links are in the show notes. You could also subscribe with a paid subscription on Substack if you would like. Uh, and if you know of another way that you like to support artists, please let me know about it. I will join it for you. Let me know about it. And, uh, and I will be there. Um, thank you again for listening the most. That is the, that is, thank you. That is the goods. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. And here I shall give you screens uh, I was surprised at how few songs about screens and like reading and I don't know, like I looked around and uh, a lot of the songs that are called like screens or, you know, I don't remember exactly what I searched for, but like nothing like really spoke to the current moment. And it's a kind of important current moment. Like there were a few, quite a few instrumentals that were about like, he spends too much time on his screen kind of uh, themed. But uh, yeah, it's, we it's weird we're not making songs about this technological moment. But Weezer did. Weezer has. And I give you now screens. <laughs> Everyone stares at the screen.